Novel Audio presents Defending Beef, The Case for Sustainable Meat Production Written by Nicolette Hahn Nyman Read for you by Nicolette Hahn Nyman We've all heard the narrative so often, the one about how red meat and beef in particular is killing us, that many of us have come to accept it as incontrovertible truth. It's so common that it's become common knowledge. The story goes like this. Americans once raised cattle, pigs, and sheep on small mixed farms scattered around the country and sprinkled with handfuls of livestock. Animal numbers were low and correspondingly Americans ate little red meat. We were thin, hypertension, stroke, and heart disease rates were low. Environmental damage from farming was minimal. Over the course of the 20th century, however, everything changed for the worse. Livestock herds ballooned. Cattle began overgrazing the western half of the United States. Red meat and animal fat became abundant, cheap, and ubiquitous. Americans gorged themselves on hamburgers, butter, and ice cream. The result? Soil erosion, water and air pollution, and skyrocketing rates of obesity and chronic diet-related diseases. There's just one problem with this narrative. It's not true. Yes, parts are correct, but facts that rarely make it into mainstream discussions and media coverage diametrically oppose key elements of this narrative. As this book will make clear, aspects of the United States environmental condition have worsened, and chronic diet-related diseases have become more widespread and severe. But these problems cannot reasonably be connected with cattle or attributed directly to butter or beef. Why? Because there are fewer cattle on the land today than there were a century ago, and because today we are eating less red meat in general and less beef in particular than at any time in recent history. We are also consuming less butter, far less whole milk, and much less saturated animal fat. No swelling bovine herds, no ever heftier helpings of red meat and animal fat. The simplistic narrative completely collapses. If you are skeptical, I won't blame you. What I've just said probably runs counter to what you've heard from innumerable sources for many years. But I come armed with data, and plenty of it, all from official government sources. While my overall premises, that cattle are good for the environment and that beef and animal fat are healthy food, are admittedly controversial in this day and age, the basic agricultural and demographic facts are not in dispute. Here is the most pertinent bit of information to keep in mind. In the second half of this book, I will detail how American dietary choices have changed. I will show that we eat less beef and less animal fat now than we did 100 years ago, while our rates of grain and sugar consumption have skyrocketed. I will present facts strongly supporting the conclusion that our sugar and flour consumption, rather than red meat and animal fat, are to blame for the sharp rise in chronic diseases. The popular narrative is also far off base concerning the numbers of animals on the land. In reality, decreasing per capita consumption has run parallel with a downward trend in cattle in U.S. inventory. The total quantity of red meat and dairy produced has increased in tandem with our rising population and some is exported. But the amount of beef and dairy the United States exports is actually quite small. Only about 7% and 2%, respectively, go to foreign markets. So cattle raised for exported meat and milk products barely affect the math. The bottom line is that increased production levels in both the beef and dairy sector have not been accompanied by expanding herd sizes. On the meat side, this is because animals are slaughtered at much younger ages. At the dawn of the 20th century, a typical beef steer going to slaughter was four or five years old. Today, to lower costs and enabled by growth hormones, that steer is killed at less than two years of age, typically around 14 months. Dairy cows, too, go to slaughter at much younger ages, often at just three years of age. This also affects beef supply because, now as always, a large portion of U.S. beef comes from dairy cattle. The rise in milk production, however, is owing to an entirely different issue. 
As I detailed in my book, Righteous Pork Chop, selective breeding of dairy cows for greater milk output, read large udders, has vastly increased per animal production. At the beginning of the 20th century, U.S. average per cow milk production was 2,902 pounds annually. Today, it is 19,951 pounds, about 2,347 gallons, per year. Of course, this is often touted as a huge victory for humanity. But the scale of the increase, nearly sevenfold, suggests that selective breeding has been pushed to an extreme, 